Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask the Consistory. Ask the Consistory is a mini-series we do here on the Consistory of the Coalc YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel, the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Now today I would like to talk about the practice of lay reading and by extension also the topic of lay preaching. So before we get underway with looking at scripture and the Lutheran confessions and all that, I basically want to give five kind of different positions that I have seen on the topic of lay reading and lay preaching. Uh, the first is, the first position would be like the most open in which basically a lay person can just pretty much do anything a pastor can do. They can they can preach, they can do absolution, they can consecrate the elements, they can distribute the elements, and there are some churches that teach this position on uh, the lay ministry, allowing lay people to do practically anything a pastor can do. The second position uh, is one that seems to be the most common. This is the one found in churches like the Lutheran Church of Australia, also the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and so on and so on, in which Laity can read a lay reading service, which is essentially just a service without communion, although the laity are not allowed to consecrate or distribute Holy Communion, and they are not allowed to do the absolution, so normally the service orders will have the lay person doing a declaration of grace instead, but they are allowed to lead the service, do the Bible readings, and preach sermons that have been pre-prepared by a pastor. Now, here in Australia, groups like the Lutheran Church of Australia allow both men and women to do this, whereas smaller groups like the Australian Evangelical Lutheran Church have limited this just to males only, so women can't do this. But basically, they're doing a service without Holy Communion, but there's no absolution, no communion, but the layperson can still get up and preach. There is then um, a third position. Um, this is held kind of by guys like the Evangelical Lutheran Diocese of North America, or Eldona, which is that they follow the historical Lutheran practice of not having a kind of whole lay reading service, but having the lay person do the recitation of Luther's small catechism. There is a fourth position, which is the position held by my church, the Confessional Orthodox Evangelical Lutheran Communion, which essentially practices almost the same as Eldona. We have the recitation of the small catechism, in place of a lay reading service. The difference between the two is that the Eldona, while they don't necessarily support lay preaching, they allow a lay person to read out an expository letter written by the pastor on the text for the day. Kind of like a small homily. Um, so Eldona is essentially allowing lay preaching inside of their lay reading service, whereas the Coelk does not allow lay preaching. We're going to get into this as the video goes on. So we allow lay reading, but not lay preaching. And then the fifth and final position is that held by groups like the Orthodox Lutheran Confessional Conference, or OLCC, which is they don't have lay reading at all. Basically, if a pastor is absent, there's no service. So that's kind of the five positions. The Going from the more open, lady can do anything, through to the kind of no lady can't do anything position. Um, the Coalc finds ourselves in a very unique middle position where we allow lay reading, but we don't allow lay preaching. And interestingly enough, the Coalc kind of stands alone on this position. I know that sounds bad, like, oh, if you're the only ones doing it, then you must be wrong. Not necessarily true. I mean, you could be the only ones telling the truth as well. The issue is not how many people support your idea, it's actually whether you are in agreement with scripture and the confessions and the historical Lutheran position on this matter. I would remind people that in John 6, Jesus has the crowd of over 5,000 people come to him seeking more bread, and Jesus responds by telling them they must eat his flesh or they can't have eternal life, and the crowd leaves except for the 12 disciples. So there was originally 
5,000 plus people gathered there to listen to Jesus preaching. And after Jesus taught them the truth, all but 12 rejected the truth. Only the 12 disciples stayed. So numbers don't mean anything. The matter is, is what you teach and practice in agreement with scripture and the confessions? And that is what I'm here today to explain the Coelk position and to give our argument that our position is the right position, that it is in keeping with scripture and the confessions. So to do this, I'm going to go through the scriptural arguments, I'm going to go through the confessional arguments, and then I'm going to go through the historical arguments of the traditional Lutheran practice. After going through the practices of the early Lutherans and the Lutheran reformers, I wanted to have a brief statement about kind of what the of kind of how this practice of lay reading, lay preaching has changed and progressed in the Australian context. I'm focusing, I'm focusing specifically on Australia only because I don't have a great knowledge of the history of other countries. I don't know much about Lutheranism in Europe. I know a little bit about Lutheran history in America, but I do have a deep knowledge of Lutheran history in Australia, and so I'm going to focus on the Australian context as we get towards the end of this video, and then I want to wrap up just by giving a brief statement on the Coelk position. And the main reason I want to do that is that the Coelk, as of this point, has not yet written a actual public statement or confession or declaration on our practice on lay reading or lay preaching, but I do have a small little brief explanation on our position that I have for the right of a kusta or a lay reader, which kusta is just another term for lay reader. It's the historical Lutheran term from Germany for lay reader. Uh, but basically for the right of appointing a kusta or a lay reader, I have a brief explanation in there on the co-op position. So I want to just read that at the end, just so people know exactly what our position is. So I'm going to begin by going through scripture. And there's plenty I could go through here, but for those who have seen my previous videos on lay consecration and lay distribution, I really give most of the arguments there. Um, the main argument is that the Bible is clear that it is the pastors, the ordained ministers, who are to do the work of the ministry. Um, you have 1 Corinthians 4.1 that talks about the pastors being the stewards of the mysteries of God and we have the Lutheran confessions that teach us that this term mysteries of God is referring to word and sacrament. You see this also in Acts when they appoint the deacons in Acts 6 where the apostles make it clear that it is the pastor's job to work in the ministry of word and sacrament. And so moving on from that, we also have Hebrews 5.4 that says that nobody should take on this position of the ministry unless they are called. So you don't serve in the ministry, you don't take on the roles of the ministry unless you have been called into the ministry. And as scripture teaches us, the roles of the ministry are to preach the word and to administer the sacraments. And so you shouldn't be doing those things unless you have been called into the office of the ministry. A great verse to think about in regards to this topic of lay reading and lay preaching is Romans 10, particularly verse 15. Here Paul talks about how how is someone to believe the gospel if they haven't heard? How are they to hear the gospel if no one preaches it to them? How is someone to preach unless they are sent? This is the sending, commissioning, calling, appointing, that someone must be sent and called and ordained to go and preach. Lay people aren't to just get up and do preaching. A person must be called to preach. And if they are called to preach, then they should be called into the actual proper office that is in, responsible for preaching. You can't just call a lay person to do the roles of a pastor. If you can call a lay person to preach, then why can't you call a lay person to absolve and to consecrate the elements? So this is something that's important because there seems to be a lack of consistency in these churches. You have churches that say, hey, look, laity can do anything a pastor can do. They can absolve, they can consecrate, they can distribute, they can preach. And why I disagree with those churches, at least they are consistent. If you can allow a lay person to do one of the functions of the ministry, why can't they do all the functions of the ministry? Whereas you get these other churches that make these distinctions in the ministry. Uh, some that say, oh, a lay person can't consecrate, but they can distribute the Lord's Supper. Or a lay person can't consecrate or distribute, but they can preach a sermon. 
why are you making these distinctions in the ministry? The scriptures are clear of the responsibilities of the ministry to preach the word and to distribute the sacraments. That is the role of the pastor. And you shouldn't be doing the roles of the pastor unless you are ordained. Now, one thing that must be specified though is there is an appropriate place for lay preaching. And I'm going to talk about this more when we get to the section on what Luther and the early reformers said about lay preaching and lay reading. There is an appropriate place for lay people to preach, and that is in private. If you look in the book of Acts, there's a situation where Apollos is preaching, and he doesn't fully understand the message of Jesus because it says that Apollos at this point only knew the teachings of John the Baptist. So he wasn't fully aware of all the teachings of Christianity. But along comes Priscilla and Aquila, a lay woman and a lay man. And they pull Apollos aside and they further explain to him the word of God so that his preaching would be better. Neither the lay woman, Priscilla, nor the lay man, Aquila, gets up and starts preaching. They don't preach publicly. Instead, they pull the pastor aside and they preach privately. And this is the appropriate place for a lay person to preach. Any Christian can preach God's word and teach God's word, but they do so in private. When the public congregation forms, there must be a public preacher who is called by the congregation to do the public preaching. And so let us then move on to what the Book of Concord says about lay reading and lay preaching. So the Book of Concord has mainly two passages I want to talk about. The first is the well-known Article 14 that nobody should preach, teach, or administer the sacraments unless they are rightly called. And this rightly called is referring to call and ordination. They must be examined, trained, called, and ordained into the office of the ministry in order to publicly preach, teach, and administer the sacraments. Again, we have also in Article 28 of the Augsburg Confession, line 5 and 6, which says that it is taught among our people, that is the Lutherans, that according to the gospel, that is the power of the keys, or the power of bishops, is the power of God's mandate to preach the gospel, to forgive and retain sins, and to administer the sacraments. And then it goes on, because Christ sent out his apostles with the command, and it reads John 20 and Mark 16, and it gives some Bible verses to back this up. But here we have, in Article 28 of the Augsburg Confession, that the office of the keys, or the office of the ministry, is the office to preach the gospel, to forgive and retain sin, so that is absolution, and to administer the sacraments. Uh, particularly, the German version says to administer and distribute the sacraments. And so I talked about this in my previous uh, video on lay distribution, that this isn't limited just to consecration, but also to the consecration and distribution of the Lord's Supper. So we have here from the Book of Concord that the role of the ministry is to preach God's word, to pronounce absolution, to baptize, and to consecrate and distribute Holy Communion. These are the functions of a pastor, and Article 14 tells us that nobody is to perform these functions in the public congregation unless they have been called and ordained. No one is to preach, teach, or administer the sacraments unless they have been rightly called. And so it doesn't matter if there's some lay reader, they can't preach. They are not allowed to preach. The Book of Concord makes this clear that preaching is the responsibility of the pastor and that nobody is to publicly preach unless they are rightly called. And so we will then now move on to the historical practice of the Lutheran churches. And so the first thing I wanted to bring up was a quote from Martin Luther. And this comes from a writing of Martin Luther from 1523 titled so it's a rather long title. Reasons and proof from scripture that a Christian assembly or congregation has the right and power to judge doctrine and to call, install, and dismiss teachers. Now, Luther writes here about the appropriate way that a lay person is and isn't to preach. He writes, Here then, we are again assured 
that a Christian does not only have the right and authority to teach the word of God, but also that he is duty bound to do so at the peril of losing his soul and God's grace. You may say, but how? If he has not been called to do so, as you yourself have often taught, he dare not preach. To this I reply, here you must place a Christian in two places. Firstly, if he is where there are no Christians, he need no other call than that he is a Christian, inwardly called by God and anointed. There he owes it to his errant heathen and non-Christians to preach and teach them the gospel, moved by Christian love, even though no Christian has called him to do so. Thus St. Stephen did as he, we are told in Acts 7, though the apostles had not entrusted him with the office of preaching, yet he preached and performed great miracles among the people. So also did Philip the deacon, Stephen's partner, though also to him the ministry had not been entrusted. So also did Apollos. In such cases, a Christian out of Christian love has compassion on the distress of the poor, perverted souls and does not wait until he receives a command or letter from a prince or bishop, for necessity ignores all laws and recognises no law. Hence, Christian love makes it one's duty to help where otherwise there is no one who helps and should help. In the second place, however, if he, the Christian, is where there are other Christians who have the same power and right as he, he should not put himself forward, but let others call and put him forth, so that he might preach and teach in the place and at the command of the others. So there are several things here of importance that we can get from this Luther quote. Firstly, Luther himself acknowledges that people could say to him, you have taught that an uncalled layperson dare not preach. Luther himself says here that he has taught that a lay person cannot preach. However, Luther goes on to explain that there are two different circumstances. When a lay person is in private or in a situation outside of the Christian congregation where there is no church, there is no congregation, he is not only allowed to preach but is duty bound to preach. If there is no Christian congregation present, the lay person can preach a sermon. He can preach the word of God and he does not need to fear that he is somehow violating the ordinances of God. However, Luther says, in the second place, if the Christian is in a place where there are other Christians, that is, within the Christian congregation, then he dare not preach unless he has been called. So Luther rejected lay preaching in regards to preaching before a Christian congregation. A lay person can preach and teach in private or to non-Christians, but he cannot get up and preach and teach in the Christian congregation unless he is called. This is the official position of not only the Lutheran Confessions, but Martin Luther himself. This then leads us on to now the historical practices of the Lutheran churches. So, the General Saxon Articles of 1557 stated that in the absence of a pastor, the Kuster, this is their term for lay reader, was allowed to read the epistle and the gospel reading for the day and to sing some German hymns. That is what he's told to do. The Kuster is said that he is to read the scripture readings for the day and sing hymns. So this isn't even a full-on lay reading service. It's simply, okay, if there's no pastor present for that Sunday, then the Christian congregation can gather, and the appointed Kuster or lay reader is allowed to get up, read directly from the Bible, not preach, not explain, not teach, just literally read the Word of God, and then the congregation can sing some hymns. That is what the... 1557 General Saxon Articles said a lay reader was allowed to do. There is also one more point that is very important because the Saxon General Articles of 1557 also explicitly state that, I'm going to quote here, the Kuster is not to preach unless he was ordained to the diaconate. And in this case, 
when they say deacon, they're not referring to like a lay deacon. Sometimes we use the word deacon or elder these days to refer to lay readers and lay assistants. But historically, the terms elder and deacon have actually referred to the office of the ministry to assisting pastors. Although historically, the term deacon has been used for both lay assistants and pastoral assistants. Basically, the word deacon kind of is synonymous with the word for assistant. And historically, there have been lay deacons and also clerical deacons. This is based on the Bible verse that says that there are elders who preach and elders who don't preach. Uh, Martin Chemnitz wrote about this where he talks about there being elders who preach and elders who don't preach, arguing that this means that there are lay people who can assist and that there who are called elders. There are lay elders who don't teach, whereas there are clerical elders who do teach. And so this has been the historical practice in the Lutheran Church that there are ordained deacons who can preach and teach and administer the sacraments. They are assisting pastors. And there are lay deacons, those who kind of dealt with the more financial and property aspects of the church. They didn't take care of things like preaching and teaching. They took care of the physical worldly side of the congregation, like the property and the finances and charity and stuff like that, such as in the book of Acts, the apostles take on the responsibility of preaching and teaching the word, and they get the seven deacons to take care of the distribution of, you know, food and charity to the widows. So, continuing on with that, in Luther's day, uh, at the church at Wittenberg, Luther himself actually ordained a deacon named George Rower, and it is said in his ordination that he shared the office of the ministry, that he was of equal standing with all the other pastors of Wittenberg, even though he was an assistant. So when the Saxon general articles say that a person should be ordained to the diaconate, they are talking not about lay deacons, but are talking about assisting pastors. And here, the general articles of Saxony from 1557 says that a cooster may read the epistle, read the gospel, and lead the singing of hymns, but explicitly states that he is not to preach a sermon unless he is being called in to the diaconate. So that's also quite clear from the uh, statement from the reformers. There is also, following on from this, there is a church order from 1581. This is one year after the Book of Concord was compiled of the church order of the city of Hoya. And so this order from the church of Hoya gives the outlines of what a cooster was to do in the absence of a pastor. And it says that a cooster in the absence of a pastor is to read a rest, lead a recitation of Martin Luther's small catechism to read the gospel and the epistle lessons for the day. And that was it. So we have these two statements from the early Lutherans as to what a lay reader could and shouldn't do. A lay reader could lead the recitation of Luther's small catechism. A lay reader could read the scriptural readings for the day. And they could lead in hymns but they are explicitly told not to preach. So lay readers could lead a recitation, read the scriptures, but not read or preach a sermon. They're explicitly told not to do so. Because as Luther said, when there is a Christian congregation gathered, no one is to preach unless they are called by the congregation. And as the Book of Concord teaches, no one is to publicly preach, teach, or administer the sacraments without being rightly called. So the church orders and the general articles make it clear that even though in the absence of a pastor we may permit a lay person to read Luther's catechism and read the scriptures, we prohibit them from preaching a sermon. That is the official position of the reformers of Martin Luther, of the Lutheran confessions and of the early Lutherans. One thing I wanted to add, though, is this argument about the difference between preaching a sermon and reading a sermon. Because there are some churches that try to make this distinction between reading a sermon prepared by a pastor and preaching a sermon. But this distinction is it's a, it's a false, it's a fallacy. It doesn't exist. You're making this false dichotomy where it's like, oh, well, there's, there's either reading a sermon or there's preaching a sermon. They're not the same thing.
Well, actually, they are the same thing, and the best evidence for this is that in Luther's day, they had these things, and I'm not going to say the German, because I'm going to, I'm going to butcher the German, so I'll just use the English translation, necessity pastors. These are kind of the equivalent of the modern-day Missouri Synod SMPs, the special ministry pastors. These were pastors that had very little training. Often, this occurred because they had been ordained under the Roman Catholic system, and they hadn't received much training under the Roman Catholics, and they had now converted to Lutheranism. And Luther said to them, don't, you know, don't abandon your office, don't abandon your vocation. You were called to be a pastor. Don't give it up just because you were incorrectly trained and ill-equipped and uneducated under the Catholics. Don't give up the ministry just because your lack of knowledge. Instead, stay in the ministry and work on growing your knowledge because the world needs pastors, the church needs pastors, don't give up this ministry. And so they had these things called necessity pastors, which like I said is the equivalent of the modern day SMPs or special ministry pastors. And so these pastors, because of their lack of education, Luther prepared for them his church postals. So Luther wrote this book called the Church Postals, which were a list of ser which is a book of sermons for these necessity pastors to preach from. And so I ask you, what is the difference between a necessity pastor getting up and reading a sermon written by Martin Luther and a lay reader getting up and reading a sermon by Martin Luther? There isn't a difference. Both is preaching. Unless you're saying the necessity pastors aren't preaching when they read a sermon by Luther. Must, are they having to write their own sermon in order for them to be preaching? Can't they read somebody else's sermon? If I go and grab off my bookshelf there um, a copy of Walther's sermons, and then I get up and I read that on Sunday, am I not actually preaching? Am I just reading Walther's sermon? No. I'm still preaching. By reading out Walther's sermon, I am actually preaching Walther's sermon. So if a lay reader were to take one of my sermons and read it out before the congregation, they would be preaching that sermon. They're not simply reading a sermon, they're preaching a sermon. You can read the scriptures because you're just reading out what the scriptures say. Preaching is when you teach and explain and expand upon the scriptures. So it doesn't matter whether you wrote it yourself or whether you're reading something written by somebody else. If you are explaining and teaching the scriptures, that is preaching. That is teaching the scriptures. And so lay preaching is whenever a lay person reads a sermon in a congregation, whether they wrote it themselves or whether it was written for them by somebody else. It is lay preaching. And the scriptures teach us that nobody should preach unless they are sent. The book of Concord says that nobody should publicly preach and teach in a congregation unless they have been rightly called. Luther said that a lay person may preach in private outside of the Christian congregation, but they dare not preach in the Christian congregation. The, the Saxon General Articles of 1557 explicitly say that a lay reader, a Kusta, is allowed to read the epistle and read the gospel, but they were explicitly told not to preach unless they were ordained into the office of the ministry. So, the official teachings of the scriptures, the confessions, and the early Lutherans is that a lay person can do a lay reading service in the absence of a pastor, but they dare not preach. Lay reading is permissible, lay preaching is expressly condemned and rejected by scriptures, the confessions, and Luther, and the early Lutherans. That is the official teaching of the Lutheran Church, and that is the official teaching that the confessional Orthodox Evangelical Lutheran Communion holds. And we stand alone on our position, strangely. Uh, the closest church to us would be the Eldona, who kind of also rejects the concept of lay preaching, but they do this same thing where they allow lay people to read out a sermon, or they, in their case, an expository letter written by the pastor, which is essentially the same thing as a sermon. If you're reading a small letter that is explaining and teaching the text, how is that different to reading out a sermon? They're the same thing, and this is preaching.
So the Coalc stands alone as the only Lutheran church that opposes this unbiblical, unLutheran teaching of lay preaching. And this leads me to the historical practices of the Lutheran churches in Australia, because this wasn't always the case. In fact, in the 1800s, Lutherans actually debated the topic of lay preaching. Here, in the state of Queensland, there were specifically two different types of Lutherans in Queensland. There were those pastors trained by the Basil Seminary and the Gosner Seminary. These are the more ecumenical, reformed uh, Union Church seminaries over in Europe. They were much more liberal Lutherans. On the other side, there was the pastors trained by the more confessionally Lutheran Hermansburg Theological Seminary. And they were here in Queensland, and there was efforts made to try and unite these two groups together to form one unified confession, one unified Queensland Lutheran Synod. And one of the main sticking points, now there were a number of issues, but one of the main sticking points between the two groups was this question of lay preaching. See, from what I can find reading the history of the Lutheran churches in Australia, every Lutheran church that came over from Germany to Australia allowed some form of lay reading to take place. However, in Queensland at least, the Hermannberg pastors rejected lay preaching. They permitted lay reading, but they strongly opposed lay preaching, calling it unbiblical and unLutheran. Even Pastor Schirmeister who himself was trained by the Gosner Seminary, himself more of a, he's not really a liberal Lutheran, he, he was really much in the middle, he was kind of a moderate Lutheran, he found himself kind of the bridge between the liberal Lutherans and the more conservative Lutherans. But Pastor Schirmeister himself found lay preaching to be a sticking point. There is an account in which several of the different pastors in Queensland were meeting together for a conference to try, try and discuss fellowship. And Pastor Schirmeister, this moderate, liberal-leaning Lutheran, said he wouldn't go. And the reason he gave was because Pastor Houseman and the different pastor supported the, what he called, unscriptural, unLutheran practice of lay preaching. Two of the pastors present at this conference supported lay preaching, the others opposed it, and so Schirmeister said he would not go because those two pastors were there, and if they were going to be supporting lay preaching, he didn't want to have fellowship with them. This was an actual issue that they debated in the 1800s in Queensland. And eventually these two Lutheran churches didn't have fellowship. One group, the Gosner Basil guys, formed the Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Queensland, and the Hermansburg pastors formed the United German Evangelical, the United German and Scandinavian Lutheran Synod of Queensland, or UGS, they call them for short. And these Uggs rejected lay preaching. Now, the other churches supported lay preaching, and over time, most of the churches adopted this. In 1921, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Australia, or ELCA, a sister church with the Missouri Synod, brought out their hymn book, the Australian Lutheran Hymn Book. And in that, they had a service for lay reading, which, again, follows the modern example of just being basically a service without Holy Communion. And in the Elkers hymnal, they actually, in the, so in the Elkers hymnal, in the service for lay reading, there is a spot for the lay person to get up and preach a sermon prepared by the pastor. So the Missourian churches in Australia were supporting lay preaching, whereas the Hermansburg pastors were opposing lay preaching. And the Hermansburg pastors went on to kind of have fellowship and connections with Lowa and the Iowa Synod, so we can kind of see then this distinction between Iowa and Missouri on this matter of lay preaching, although, as I mentioned, kind of by the 1900s, pretty much all Lutheran churches in Australia were practicing lay preaching. So, this, this is the development of the topic of lay preaching. The early Lutherans opposed it, by the 1800s, it was still debated amongst the Lutherans, even leading to essentially a division and split between two synods. And by the 1900s, pretty much everybody just accepted it. Everyone said, oh yeah, we don't care. A lay person can get up and preach as long as they're reading a sermon written by a pastor and not preaching their own sermon. And that is how it has continued in Australia until today when the co has stood up and said, no, 
We stand on the word of God. We stand on the confessions. We stand on the teachings of Luther. We stand for the truth. And even though we may stand alone on this point, we will stand on the truth. It doesn't matter if we are small and we are the only ones objecting to this practice of lay preaching. We will do so because we believe what the scriptures teach. We believe what the Lutheran confessions teach. And we believe what Martin Luther taught and what the early Lutherans instructed for lay readers to do. That they may read the Bible and they may read Luther's catechism, but they are not allowed to preach. Now this leads me to wrapping up with a brief statement about what is the Lutheran position on, well, what is the co position on, well, the same thing, the Lutheran position, the co position is teaching the true Lutheran position. So what is the co and henceforth true Lutheran position on lay reading and lay preaching? So this comes from our right for the appointing of a kusta or lay reader for a congregation. So I read, the early Lutherans, such as the Church Order of Hoya, permitted a layman to lead the congregation in the recitation of Martin Luther's small catechism in the absence of a pastor. They were also permitted to read the Epistle and Gospel readings for the day. Historically, the Church Catholic also allowed laity to lead the Matins or Vespers services in the absence of a pastor. The Coalc thus permits a Custa to lead the congregation in either a recitation or a matin service. Now, however, during the Pietist era of Lutheranism, the office of the ministry was, was diminished and the priesthood of all believers was raised. Debates arose amongst these Lutherans concerning the topic of lay preaching, the practice in which a lay person could preach a sermon prepared by a pastor. The confessional Lutheran groups originally saw this position as unbiblical and unLutheran. The Augsburg Confession in Article 14 states that nobody should publicly preach, teach, or administer the sacraments without a rightly ordered call. This includes examination, call, and ordination. Thus, in accordance with the scriptures and the Lutheran confessions, the Coalc does not permit a Custa to publicly preach, to baptize, absolve, or consecrate or distribute Holy Communion. A kusta may lead a congregation in the service of recitation or matins. They may read from the Word of God, and they may lead the congregation in corporate prayer. These are the responsibilities of a kusta. A kusta is not allowed to preach. They can lead a service, and they can read the Word of God but they are not to preach. And that wraps up this rather lengthy video on the topic of lay reading and lay preaching. I didn't think this video was going to go this long, but when you go through the scriptures, the confessions and Lutheran history, it's kind of no surprise that it's a bit longer video than normal. So I, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you've managed to stick through all the way to the end. And uh, if you haven't watched my videos on lay consecration and lay distribution, I would recommend that you go and check out those um, videos as well because it is there where I give a much deeper, in-depth argument as to the responsibilities of a pastor versus the responsibilities of a lay person. I kind of touched on those a bit in this video, but in my previous videos, I've gone into that topic in greater detail. So if you want a stronger argument and a more detailed discussion about the roles of a pastor and the roles of a lay of a lay person I would suggest that you go and watch my videos on lay consecration and lay distribution I've been your host Reverend Jake Zabel goodbye and God bless